Analog video recorders are obsolete. Nobody really uses them anymore. But the technology that is inside them is very clever. And that's why, in my opinion, even though it's 2018, it's still very interesting to take a look at how exactly these machines work. In a typical tape recording setup, you have your tape which consists out of the tape itself, which is then covered in an oxide layer. And this oxide layer can be magnetized by a magnet, for example. And then in the recording device, there is a so-called head. Now the head is basically an electromagnet, it's a coil of wire. And when you turn on the electricity on that head, it becomes a magnet and it's able to magnetize the oxide layer on the tape. So what happens if you're, let's say, recording audio to a tape, then the tape will be running at a, uh, at a set speed below that head. Then you feed your audio signal into the head, um, which then creates an alternating magnetic field around it. And this alternating magnetic field corresponds to the audio signal that you fed into it. And it will then create a magnetic pattern on the tape that corresponds to the audio signal as well. The next time you're playing this tape, the, the magnetized tape runs underneath the head. But this time the head is not acting like a magnet, it's acting like a generator. So the magnetized pattern on the tape induces an electric current, an alternating electric current, inside the head, which recreates the original audio signal that we recorded. So that's the idea of tape recording, and of course we can also do this for video, so we can feed in some sort of video signal, and we can then record that onto the tape by feeding that video signal into our head. There's a problem though with video, and that is that video is a lot more information than audio. That means you're dealing with much higher frequency signals, and when you feed a very high frequency signal into a head that is positioned above a slow moving tape, that means the magnetization pattern that you're creating is incredibly small and very, very high resolution. In other words, the, the information is packed tightly together onto that tape and that means the density is going to be way too high and with the old technology that we had back in the day we wouldn't be able to read that information. Another solution would be to just make the tape run fast. If the tape would run at a high speed, so let's say three meters per second, well then the density of the information wouldn't be that big. But of course, if the tape needs to run very fast, then the machine is going to wear very quickly and you need massive cassettes. I mean, if this thing would be running at three meters per second, you'll need miles of tape if you want a couple of hours of video. And that's not really convenient. So clearly they needed to come up with some sort of way of storing video onto a tape without making the tape run at an insane speed. Engineers came up with the following idea to fix this. They said, what if we take the video tape and make it move at a slow speed past the head, but then we make the head sweep across the tape so that you get these diagonal lines that are the video information on the tape. Now the question was, how would you do that? <laughs> right? How would you make a video head sweep across the tape at such a high speed? Would you have some sort of robotic arm doing that? Well, no, they came up with the following system. When your video cassette enters the machine, it presses a little knob on the side here, which opens the cassette like this. Then two pulleys will grab this tape and pull it out of the cassette. They will then wrap it around a very, very fast spinning drum. And on that drum, there are two video heads that can read the tape. And here is the twist. That drum is positioned at an angle. You can see it in this schematic drawing. So that means we have this slow moving tape moving over this fast spinning drum. And that means the video heads that are on the drum will move across the video tape in the manner that we just discussed. This way, we're able to move the video heads relative to the tape at great speed, allowing us to 
store high frequency video signals onto a tape without moving the tape at great speed itself, which means we can get away with using smaller cassettes and not having a machine that runs like a jet engine. In this system, every one of these diagonal lines on the tape corresponds to one field of a video. And uh, if you don't know what that is, you can watch the video about interlaced versus progressive that I made a while ago. One field is basically half a frame of video. So two of these lines are one frame. And each head on the drum, there are usually two heads on it, each head reads one of these fields. That means, since normal television runs at 50 fields per second, or 25 frames per second, the drum spins at exactly 1500 rotations per minute. Because that means 25 rotations per second, in other words, 50 half rotations per second. As far as the audio goes, well the audio is simply recorded onto a normal linear track that is located next to all these diagonal lines, because remember, for the audio, the slow speed of the tape is no problem, so we, we don't need any weird sweeping for the audio signal. And that is basically how a video recorder works. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.